2018, the first weekend in July to be precise, and it's a beautiful summer's day in the village of Datchet, just a stone's throw from Windsor. Today, Datchet's Village Green is the final destination for over 40 pre-1905 vehicles that have just taken part in a reenactment of one of the village's former inhabitants' most celebrated journeys. That inhabitant is the Honourable Evelyn Ellis, and his journey, originally undertaken in 1895, is referred to by most as the Ellis Journey. A notorious horses carriage enthusiast, Ellis was the first person to introduce the word garage into the English language, as well as being one of the first directors of the Daimler Motor Company and one of the founders and vice chairman of the RAC. But he's probably best known for having undertaken the journey which now bears his name and which most are here to celebrate today the journey of the first horseless carriage on an English public road. Many of the vehicle owners taking part in today's reenactment are wearing period costume, despite the extreme heat of a record-breaking British summer, and members of the public have been invited along. After all, there's live music to celebrate, and selfies with the brightly polished and buffed vehicles to be taken. The first arrival is Lord Montague of Bewley in his 1903 Daimler with a distinctive AA number plate and it attracts a lot of attention from members of the public. And if you loiter long enough, you'll no doubt overhear vehicle owners swapping their horror stories of near breakdowns or minor incidents like that awkward moment on the bridge where we thought we were stuck forever. The reenactment has been organised by veteran car enthusiasts Nick Canfor and Laurie Smith. I'm not the first one to recreate it. It was done in um, uh, 1995, um, which was the 100th anniversary. Um, the gentleman who did it then actually has unfortunately since died, and nobody ever did it again afterwards. So I thought, well, we would reenact it. And we did it last year, and we had 21 cars enter, all pre-1905 cars. And this year we've got uh, 45 cars entered. So, yeah, it's, um, it's grown. The original journey was undertaken by Ellis to protest the Red Flag Act, a hyenas piece of legal nonsense which was a huge impediment to the arrival of a British motor car industry that could realistically compete with the French and Germans. The Act restricted vehicles to a speed of 4 miles per hour on the open road, making it illegal to drive without a walking man leading the vehicle whilst waving a red flag. Ellis undertook his journey to deliberately flout the law in the hope that he would be arrested and that the resulting publicity would hasten the repeal of the Red Flag Act. Although he wasn't arrested, the much-loathed act was repealed the following year. So, as with the original journey, no red flags en route today then. But in fact, this particular one, they are going to walk them out with a red flag tomorrow morning just to sort of show a bit of the history. Lots of well-wishers, including the local BBC TV news station, line the route, and it seems this annual event is going from strength to strength, giving even the world-famous London to Brighton veteran car event a real run for its money. Now, it was an act of rebellion against the rules of the road. A Berkshire man driving at speeds of up to 10 miles an hour from Mitchell Devastation in Hampshire to his home near Windsor. That first recorded car journey on UK roads was reenacted today by dozens of the very earliest motor vehicles. Alan Sinclair reports. She's a sensitive little girl. Doesn't like them more. Dating back to the late 19th century, the fact these cars remain roadworthy is testament to the love and care lavished on them by devoted owners. The problem's more to do with the owner than the car. I run around locally at home two miles here and two miles there. This is going to be the test. 
One by one, this morning's parade were symbolically led to the start by a man bearing a red warning flag, compulsory in 1895 when the speed limit was two miles an hour in town. The legal limit on the open road was just four. The Honourable Evelyn Ellis uh, decided that he was going to go to Datchet, which is where he lived, without a man walking in front of the red flag, and had he got arrested, he was going to make a lot of fuss. There's three levers to press, and you don't have a steering wheel, you have this stick to turn, so it's quite hard. <laughs> the Ellis journey began from Mitchell Devastation, and the cars followed the same route. The original trip took eight hours and 14 minutes, but modern roads and speed limits meant the vintage cars could open up in a way unthinkable back then. It's important that these old vehicles are seen out on the road, and uh, I see it really as a, a, a moving museum for the public to be able to see. It's the second time the Ellis journey's been reenacted. Event organisers hope it will become an annual fixture like the London to Brighton Vintage Car Rally. Alan Sinclair, BBC South Today.